today we're actually going to talk about Ebola, but we may have to hold you over for tomorrow on that mm -hmm. because of Ebola is so serious what's going on in the world. If it comes to America, the experts are warning us what we should do, and nobody's ready. You know, the war in the Middle East could cause global panic, uh, a great earthquake taking out a good corner of our country could literally collapse our economy. And now we've got a third, any one of these three. Now we have Ebola. And the CDC, I just read it. I couldn't believe that they would say this. But they said that it's inevitable that Ebola will hit America. Uh, Not just in a contained, you know what I mean, isolation right. unit. Right. And, uh, and that's from the Center of Disease Control worldwide. That's the main control of diseases for the world is made in that statement. Is that right, Zach? That's right. So yes. like, like Pastor John just said, the CDC is saying that it's inevitable. Well, there's another article that says if Ebola comes to the United States, this is what it will look like. Like I said, but the CDC already said that it's in inevitable. This is what this article says. What Ebola outbreak would look like in the U.S.? According to a senior health official at the Council of Foreign Relations, the world has no strategic plan to contain the worst Ebola outbreak in history. While scientists are saying an outbreak on U.S. soil would require sweeping measures, including total quarantines of entire cities. And if they have to quarantine or self-quarantine major cities in America, it could literally destroy the economy of this country. Yeah, and you add what's going on, what's been going on in St. Louis. Oh, boy. In Ferguson, I, I guess is what they call it. But Ferguson yeah, is like a little suburb, suburb city. Yeah. And you're seeing them march in the street. I've never seen the trying to orchestrate them from, from going crazy you know, from burning and looting and everything. But here's the thing. This is over the death of one human being. What's going to happen when the inner cities run out of food and they're all starving to death and then somebody shoots somebody and then it just lights that fuse, John. Mm -hmm. There's so many events. God's trying to warn us. I've never seen such warning. I've never seen the war for even to get on to do this show to warn you. But there's a word from God called the book of Revelation that we don't even want to open in most of our churches today. I have people come here with tears in their eyes. I see them down at the old meal or wherever I run into them. And they say, Jim, thank you for daring to tell us yes. what's happening and what's going to come on earth. And I want to tell you, there's a price to pay. And I think that's one of the reasons people don't want to teach what you're teaching, John. Because you paid a price to get here. And I was going to that a yes, little bit earlier. Did. But you paid a price. You paid a price with your family. You paid a price that, uh, you know, when you're studying night and day, people will even accuse you of being lazy. People will say, well, that's not work, Ricky, you know. But you know studying the Bible is work. It's yes, a discipline. It really is. It and, really is. And, and. So if you're going to hear from God, you have to get in a position of quietness and all the world will come to take your attention. All hell will come, as I know, to take your attention. I couldn't even get out here on this show today. There's so much going on. Crisis, 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 crisis. Deal with this, deal with this. And it is not the end. This is the beginning of the end. You haven't seen it yet. What's going to happen when you're talking about, what, 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 we'll just say about what's going on in Missouri, in, in the rioting. Mm -hmm. That one event, people are actually calling for martial law this week. They don't understand what martial, martial law stops movement of people. And if you have martial law and then you stop, and then you're talking about these situations you're talking about right now, causing People not to be like Ebola. Mm -hmm. How do they control it? They have to quarantine. That's the only tool they have. This is Michigan. This is this is Indiana. And you 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 can't go. What does that mean? The food trucks don't go. And the people who said you were crazy 
to store food are going to be at your house. But you're going to say, this thing is spreading. It's just like the bubonic plagues, how horrible they were back in, in, in the hundreds of years yeah. ago even. And, and then you, the, the, the flu. The also the great influenza of 1918 that killed 100 million people and infected 500 million people. And that's people. in the United States and all over the world. Yes. But they, they would now, because of the situation with Ebola, they have to stop the traffic from state to state, city to city. But when I read that book, The Great Influenza, mm. I, I, the only thing, John, the bottom line was just what you've done. You prepared. You've been preparing for years. And people who were prepared enough to lock their, their doors, they boarded up their houses. And this little child, I read in the diary, this became an older person and wrote, he said, as a child, I looked through the cracks of the boards in the windows and I watched every one of my little friends' bodies be carried off. Mm -hmm. I watched all of our neighbors mm -hmm. that they came and took their bodies away, you know. Mm -hmm. And that is, this, it, it was painful, but they, le they lived. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a video piece that it actually from that time, shows the postman who would actually in those days was going by horse and buggy from house to house. Mm -hmm. And it was the postman who spread the disease. They thought they had quarantined the town and they forgot. They didn't quarantine the postman. Mm -hmm. And the postman brought the disease from house to house. And so we're, we're, we're living in, you know, the Bible says, it says, I looked, and before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades was followed close behind him. They were giving power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, by plague, and by the wild beast of the earth. And this plague is disease mm -hmm. of the animals. And, and, and I, you, I, I've taught that so much, we won't go there. But then what did Jesus say in Matthew 24, 7? He said, for nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There were there. And there will be famines. That means no food to eat, Jesus said. And pestilences and disease and earthquakes in many places. And uh, you sent me an article over the uh, a week, and I have it here. And it says the one question about Ebola that no one can seem to answer. Do you have that with you today? Well, I know the gist of the can article. You, can you share that with, with uh, me? Well, it's like the question everybody's afraid to ask. Yes, that's what I... Because they're, they don't like the thought of what the answer is. And, uh, and that question is, is why have 170-something medical practitioners that are helping these patients, how is it if they are fully protected and taken, you know what I mean, the gloves on, the mask on. The protective gear. And the, and the protective gear, and yet 172 of them have caught Ebola. And many of them have died. And as a result of that, it's almost like there is no adequate protection. And many of the medical workers in these countries are walking off the job because it's almost like to care for these people is the death sentence. In Liberia, there are dead Ebola bodies that are being left in the streets. And I was reading that the reason for this is that the families who have a, I mean a, a family member that is dying, they don't want to let the authorities know that they have Ebola because they'll quarantine the whole house and they won't be able to leave to go out and get food. So when the, when the family member is dying, they drag this person off into the streets and abandon them so that their house doesn't get quarantined and everybody forced to stay inside where they would end up dying. They would die of starvation. So what happens is, is this whole family has is, is got a death sentence on them. They haven't been quarantined. They're still mixing with their neighbors. They're still going out looking for food. And it's just making this thing, you know, spiral out of control. 